Hi, I'm Mike Wilbur. Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. Today we're going to show you a tactic that you've probably never even seen before. We're going to take this very expensive Seagrave 95-foot mid-mounted tower and we're going to use it as an offensive weapon at a row of stores. A couple things have happened over time as it relates to store fires. One is, is that uh, store number three in a row will be on fire. The fire will have busted through the roof. And fire department XYZ shows up with their aerial device. They deploy it. They push the fire down through the roof of store number three. And they proceed to push the fire throughout the whole row of stores and burn the whole row of stores down. Uh, it's, not much of a, it's not much of a stretch. You can look in any of the uh, fire magazines, fire engineering. You can look on the websites and see pictures of this kind of uh, tactical uh, debacle happening all the time. We have a better way, we think. If you recall from your firefighter training early on, you were probably taught about ventilation in general, in particular a tactic that we call a trench cut. For myself personally in my career, I've been involved in about 20 trench cuts. Unfortunately, only two of them actually worked. In most cases, the fire would get a headway. Um, by the time we got enough resources and equipment and people uh, on the roof and started to, to commence with the work and got the trench actually pulled, the fire would be three stores past where we were trying to make uh, this defensive hold, and it ended up, again, burning most of the stores down. So I think we, we found a better way here. We can use this uh, aerial scope. We can use it as an offensive weapon. As you can see, we have the nozzle position here so that we can drive the water deep into the cock loft. And basically what we're trying to instruct you to do here is that we're going to take this, this nozzle, this water, and we are actually going to cut an inverted trench. We can do it much faster, we can do it much more efficiently, and we can do it much safer than having people on the roof. Uh, this is shorthanded firefighting at its best right here. Uh, folks. And so what we're going to do is we're going to supply this with water and we're going to drive the stream in and we're going to basically make a fire break. And then we can actually take the stream and we'll be able to push the fire back on itself and rather than burning a whole row of stores down, we'll be able to take a fire and say store number three, we'll skip a couple of stores, we'll set this up as you see it set up here now and we'll start our office offensive uh, attack on this fire. One of the things that are key to this is the fact that you need to have a set of stack tips rather than a combination or a fog type nozzle. This action, this tactic requires that we have the full reach and penetration of the stream. And quite frankly as it relates to tower ladder operations or aerial tower operations, it really requires a set of stack tips for safety's sake. Because you see, if you don't have a set of stack tips like this, and you're not getting the reach and penetration of the stream, firefighters in the bucket may actually uh, wander into the collapse zone uh, of the building based on the fact that we're not getting that reach and penetration of the stream, and we're trying to get uh, way too close. Uh, but this is a tried and true uh, proven tactic, uh, not widely known. Uh, unfortunately, we're trying to get uh, the word out about this, but this is a good way uh, to really fulfill part of our mission, which is to save uh, not only lives, but also uh, to save uh, property. Uh, it's easy to do. It requires a little in the way of manpower. Uh, a pumper with this, with a driver feeding this apparatus with a couple of firefighters, and we can really do a tremendous job as far as saving uh, the property here and saving the rest of the stores in this particular row. For Fire Engineering Training Minutes, this is Mike Wilbur, and we'll see you next time.